guys, how's it going? So today I'm planting some gorgeous ground cover flocks in my garden. I don't have any ground cover flocks, which is a little strange because it does so well in our area. It tends to like a slightly alkaline soil, which we have, and not a lot of plants do that. So like when we're driving around mid to late spring, which is the bloom time for this plant, it's just everywhere. Almost every garden has this plant and it just shines because the blooms are so vibrant. So this variety right here is called Spring Bling Rose Quartz. It's actually gonna be available next spring. Um, I was able to get my hands on it early just to try it out, show you guys what it looks like, how it grows, and just get some experience with it. Uh, this one, I haven't been able to get my hands on some really nice blooming phlox. Like I've been wanting to get the purple Sprite or the rose Sprite, which looks off a lot like this one. Um, but every time I get my hands on it, it's got like one bloom or it's just like going out of bloom. And when we do videos, I really wanna show you what the plant has a potential to look like. Um, otherwise, you know, sometimes it's hard to visualize. And when you're down at the garden center, there are so many good plants that can go in your garden, but they may be out of bloom season. So I always like to show you what they look like when they're at their peak. So this plant right here, well, I've got three. I've got three of the rose quartz. I'm not gonna be planting this one today. I just wanted to show it to you. This is called Spring Bling Ruby Riot. So it's got a little bit more of like a reddish pink tinge. I think this is gonna be going into a friend's garden, but I just thought I would show you the difference there. A Little bit, I don't know, a little bit less purple. This one has a little more purple in it. But I'm gonna put these right here which this area is under construction right now and it's going to be for a little while yet. Um, this is where the oak trees were and you can see we have not planted our Corinthian lindens yet. But what's gonna happen is we're gonna pull a little gravel away. This uh, area is gonna be lined in brick and then the trees will be planted and et cetera. But you know, it is what it is and we haven't got to that project yet. Either way, I think these plants are gonna look really pretty and we'll kind of spruce up this little edge for now. So this grows about four to eight inches tall and it spreads out 24 to 28 inches. So nice little carpet. And like I said, they bloom mid to late spring and they attract uh, bees and butterflies, which is really fun, kind of an added benefit. So I've got my shovel here and my fertilizer. I'm gonna get them in the ground and we'll take a look. You can also see we stopped the mulch right here. <laughs> I didn't wanna waste a bunch of mulch when I knew we were gonna be probably planting the trees. I'm guessing out like this far, which means that this area will eventually be shade, but it's gonna take a while. And even when the oak trees were here, this bed was full sun. So I'm hopeful that these will stay here and do really well for a long time because they do need a full sun spot to be the most productive. So keep that in mind if you're looking for a spot for these in your garden. All right, I'm gonna try not to make a mess in this mulch. I've got a hibiscus right here, big pink. Can't remember what variety I put in here. It was like a last minute decision and I've got a couple coming up. There's another one over there. Did I mention these are also a zone three through eight? So incredibly winter hardy. Okay, take a look at the root system on this. <laughs> look at that. That's crazy. It's a healthy plant. So I like to try to scoot the mulch away like this. And then I put all of the soil that I dig out of the hole into the can so that I don't have to make a pile on my fresh mulch. Well, you can tell this was just watered. Look at that, big chunk. I didn't think even think about running into all the oak roots. Okay, I'm gonna keep this soil on the shovel. I'll use that to backfill. And we'll use a little starter fertilizer. I have the hole on the wrong side there. There we go. Oh. By a little, I mean like kind of a significant amount there. It's all right. Mix it in with a little native soil. I am going to tease the bottom here a bit. <laughs> Don't you laugh at me? He laughs at me whenever I tease a root, but Aaron, what would you do in this case? Oh, I would tease the root for sure. Yeah. Oh, oh that's so, so beautiful. It's really good. Okay, so see that right there? There's our the rest of our hole. We're gonna make sure to backfill with native soil, packing it in nice and tight so there's no air pockets. I'm gonna use some out of here. And all of this soil that I have extra goes out to the new property and we just spread it out. I've been adding it to our temporary cut flower garden space lately because I don't think the soil is very good out there. I think it's gonna take some work. 
See, look at this. Now we can just spread the mulch right back over the top and it looks like it's been there for a while. Beautiful. Two more. They're in. I think they're really cute and I love the fact that they're going to coincide with my iris bloom time because I think that those two colors are really beautiful together. That light lavender with the rosy pink and then you can see the irises have kind of spread around which I kind of want this area to feel a little bit like a jumble a little bit cottage style which really is the rest of the flower bed and we'll go around I'll show you some of the things that are looking really good but we have a lot of opportunity here for planting because we are going to put in a walkway that kind of mirrors the walkway over there to our corner garden so there'll be a big walkway uh, big enough for the gator to get through but we will have this whole area to fill up as well as this whole area over here which you can see I'm dealing with two very different light situations at the moment um, but it's always good to watch the areas and figure out exactly what kind of light you're dealing with because this one will get more sun toward the end of the afternoon um, but these will I already mentioned they will spread out 24 to 28 inches so they'll kind of go around I'm hoping like the base of the hibiscus that I have right here and around the irises a bit and just kind of look a little bit more natural and I do think we have opportunity to pop a few more in along the way just to give this whole area kind of like a cohesive nest and a bright color in the spring so I could like pop maybe a few in here maybe a couple in there and then right down here I thought it'd be fun to put like one two and then maybe tuck one here that can kind of spill down look at this this is an Anna's magic ball right here this is a mature evergreen specimen. If you need a small evergreen for a spot in your garden, this is such a wonderful one <laughs> to grow. I just love it. And it's like out here, not really protected by anything. And it does great. Um, we've got some beautiful white perfusion salvia right here. And the honeybees are just all over it. If you take a second to look, they just love this plant. I really want to get some of this planted over in the moon garden because it adds so much color throughout the hot part of the summer and then this whole area the whole area really is under construction we moved the flagstones that are here were here they went to my in-laws house they're using them we're planning on doing something out here but we just haven't got to it yet so we went ahead and just mulched this for now we'll just use it as a walkway but beautiful pincushion flowers provide color all summer long a quick fire hydrangea that's already forming its buds that's so exciting. That's gonna be a beauty. That one's been in for a couple years now and it struggled the first year or so and then I cut it way back and it's starting to flush back really beautifully. Sedum right here, another Anna's Magic Ball, Caryopteris. Look at this. This is called Soapwort. It is a ground cover kind of, it kind of mounds up you can see there, but it's just amazing this time of year and I don't even mind, like I love the fact that it grows onto the walkway like this because I think it adds so much beautiful color and softness. I like like right here how the geranium is also spilling over. I think that's really sweet. Um, now right to my left, you're right, my left, this is kind of Benjamin's area, which this year he's actually loving to get in the teepee, even though I don't have anything planted around it yet. So we will plant something to crawl up the teepee and then we'll do some fun stuff for him right in here, but that will come a little bit later on. But for now it's nicely mulched just a nice big hole at the moment. We've got some gorgeous roses in here called the Poet's Wife. Beautiful, wonderfully scented. They smell like a rose, but they've got a um, kind of undertones. I don't know if that's how you describe smells. Undertone notes. It has notes of like fruity fruitiness and lemon, and it's just wonderful. And I've got, I think three in here. Um, and then of course the Centauria or Jupiter's Beard is what this is called. And this one, like it'll bloom for a while longer and we cut it back and then it flushes back and usually blooms for us again in the year. So you can see kind of the jumble I'm going for in this area, just a lot of different colors and textures. There is a Beyond Midnight Caryopteris we planted in a video. Oh, why was that last year? I can't remember, one of the years. And so that one will start blooming blue about midsummer through the rest of the year. And then we've got some peonies in here I planted last spring called Coral Charm. Try not to shadow it so you can really see the detail there. Isn't that the most beautiful thing? And now these are really young, so I haven't had to support them with any kind of staking yet. I planted them, I think I just said last spring, they were about this size. So this one really hasn't put on a lot more growth, but these two have blooms, which is very exciting. And then a sedum, and that brings us right back to our flocks. 
So it's a really fun area with a lot of potential. One of those spots that I just kind of continually work on a little bit here and there throughout the years. And last year was our biggest change by removing the oak trees, which has been, it has been the best thing. They were just creating such a mess over here and I was super worried about what, I don't know what kind of virus they had, three of them had it. Um, and I didn't know if it was something that could transfer to anything else. And with as many things as we've had to remove, I did not want it spreading to anything else that I was gonna have to take out. So it's been nice. And I think that these are going to be a wonderful replacement. And honestly, when they were taking the oaks out, I don't know, Aaron might have video of this or pictures, but they limbed them up from the bottom first. So we actually got to see what it would look like to have trees here that didn't go all the way to the ground as like a big hedge so that we could see underneath and we could see the fountain and the back formal garden and it, we loved it. I loved seeing that. It was almost like a weight had been lifted a little bit and that's why we decided to come in with trees that had a taller trunk that we could limb up a bit so that it would produce a little bit less of a block in our garden. So I'm just very excited about all the changes in this bed and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed seeing this new plant. Keep your eyes out for it next spring and we will see you in the next one.